6. It says, without, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For they that come up to God must believe that he is. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. So, tonight's message is the faith that pleases God. The faith that pleases God. Um, looking here in Hebrews 11, 6, it says, For without faith it's impossible to please him. And, you know, we, we've taught this from the angle of, you know, being pleasurable to God, pleasing God with our actions and our faith and, 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 and honoring him. Um, but let's go a little, little bit different direction tonight. Um, because the Greek word for please is constantly, because sometimes you take verses and, and you go a little bit different direction with them um, and still stay within you know, contextual uh, rules and so forth. And now this, this is one of the places where you can do that. Uh, the word play, translate please in the subject texture is a derivative of another Greek word, which means to agree. To agree. Okay? So that without faith it's impossible to agree with God. Okay? Are you here? Uh, to, it's impossible to agree with God. God, does, God will not agree with doubt, fear, fret, or worry, or unbelief. God doesn't agree with those things. It is the responsibility to come into agreement with him. He only accepts faith as a term for agreement. God accepts your faith as, as an agreement. Let's understand, faith is an agreement with God. Webster's Dictionary uh, defines agreement as to be of one mind. Now, since faith is a force of the spirit, then in spiritual terms, um, agreement would be of one spirit. Thus pleasing God or agreeing with God is being of one spirit. The arena for agreement is the written is in the written word of God that is made dwell in us. So let's, let's take this back to this a little bit. So that without faith it's impossible to please him or impossible to agree with him. And then coming in the, coming to agreement with God is coming to agreement or coming in line with his, with his word. And that God or agrees with God. Now, um, <clears throat> you can see how these terms can become interchangeable. Uh, my children please me when they come into agreement with my will. Hello? When they go contrary to that, they do not please me. Hey, isn't that right? They don't please me when they go contrary to my will. When they come into agreement with my will, they and they come into harmony with that. They line up with it. They do it. Okay? Uh, if I say, Nathan, uh, I want the grass cut. When I get home and I come home and the grass is still not cut, he did not please me. He did not come into agreement with my will. He knew what my will was because I gave him my word. I said, Amen? God's will is God's word. And when we come into when we please God, we have come into It's a derivative of the word means to agree. When you come into agreement with God's word, we please God. Can you say amen? Jesus said in John 6, 63, that it is the spirit that quickens. That's, that's, that's old English. Right? The word quicken. Quicken it. Um, it's, it's an Elizabethan era terminology, or King James era terminology, 1600. And it means to make alive. Okay? So we don't, we don't quicken things. We don't talk about quickening today. You know? I don't think we talk about it. The only place other than you use the term quick for speed is you can get down to the quick and you're making it. You're breaking down. You're talking about get pulled off to the quick. That living flesh down there, you know about it. And you really know about it the next day. Okay, so when it gets sore, and et cetera. And it's amazing how sensitive that little, you have just one little place. It, it, you know, having on your toe, you can't hardly walk. Walk around like you got your foot cut off. Just a little bitty place, all right? Jesus said, It is the spirit that makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. The, listen to Jesus said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words of Jesus, the word of God, remember uh, Hebrews 11 says, I mean, Hebrews. 
verse 4 says that the word is a living or a living thing. The word is quick and powerful. The word is alive, a living thing. He was 412. Okay? The, the word is a uh, is quick and powerful. So that means alive and powerful. Quick and alive. So the word is a living thing. The other translation actually translated that way. The word of God is a living thing. Okay? So Jesus said the words that he spoke were, were, were spirit, their life. Thus, agreement with God is agreement with his word. That means that the believer's life is to come into harmony, if you're going to please God, in the life of faith. And understand that the, the subject of faith and the, and the terminology of faith is not limited to what we refer to oftentimes in the church as the prayer of faith, which would really be better term, uh, in terminology, be called the prayer of believing and receiving. We call that the prayer of faith many times, but to be really specific is the prayer of believing and receiving. In other words, you pray about something, the word of God promises you, you, you believe that you receive, you believe it, that you, what you pray you have, and you receive it according to the word of God, Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. All right? He's saying this now, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not die in your heart, but thou shalt believe that the thing which you say is good and fast, you'll have whatsoever you say it. So you're, you're, you're believing and receiving. We call it the prayer of faith. And I, and I have no problem with that. I do it myself. But sometimes I think what we've done by doing that, by terming that type of prayer as the prayer of faith, we have limited people's scope of the subject of faith to believing and receiving. Instead of understanding that faith, there is faith in God, there's faith toward God, there is having faith in God's word, believing and receiving, and, and you know, your faith in God is a belief in God, which is necessarily receiving, you believe that God is. Okay? For they that come with God must believe, remember, without faith it's impossible to please Him. For they that come with God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder than the diligent that seek Him. So the, the word uh, P-I-S-T-I-S, uh, translated faith, belief, can mean to simply believe. Well, see, the prayer of faith believes and receives or the prayer of believing and receiving. Amen? So you can have faith in God. You can have faith toward God or trust. The word, you know, even the word belief can be translated to trust. I can, I can have trust in God. I can trust God. I can... I can um, lay myself in his hands with a confidence that he has my well-being at hand. I'm not believing or receiving anything. I'm just simply in a, in a state of trust. So we don't want to limit the term faith to I'm getting a new car. And we've done so much of that that I think sometimes we miss the fact, you know, that, that trusting God means we come into agreement with his word. We do what he says to I don't have to do anything. Well, yes, you do. I get, I get so tired of these these, these uh, instant mashed potato sermons on what you don't have to do because Jesus did everything and you don't have to do anything. Well, then no, everybody's going to heaven. Go ahead and be a universalist because everybody's going to heaven because Jesus, the, Jesus already paid the price for all men's sins. As a matter of fact, everybody's name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. The ones who don't receive them get blotted out. Hello. Now here you're going home. As far as God's concerned, the work to redeem every human being has been accomplished. And he went ahead and put their name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And for those who die without his lordship and reject his lordship will have their name blotted out. If you talk about hell, living in eternity, knowing that your name was on the book, and got blotted out because you rejected him. Hello. So don't say, I don't have to do anything yet. You know, God's already done it all. Yeah, he's already done it all. He's already done all he's going to do about saving you. The provision is made. Everything necessary for you to be a born-again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ has been accomplished. Except 
myself.